In this particular video, I want to talk about reversing of a transaction. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to enter a transaction and then we're going to put another transaction that reverses the first transaction, like you might see on, on a cash register. That isn't what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about in this small video is putting in a negative amount. So let's say that someone sent you a check for $100. You enter that into your accounting program and you suddenly receive feedback from the bank that the check bounced. So not only are you going to be down the $100 that you just entered in your accounting program because the check bounced, but you're probably going to incur bank fees because the check bounced. And you'd want to go and grab that person and throttle him. But apart from kneecapping the guy who gave you 100 bucks, we have to come back and put something in the accounting program. Now, I know a lot of people will just delete the entry completely, but that's not really satisfactory because if you never get that money from the guy, if he never pays up and you never receive the $100, you do want to show in here that you entered the money in the accounting program. You want to show where you reversed that entry or at least deducted the amount from the system so as that you can claim the deduction of the bounce check fee. So if you ever get audited, you can show this particular bounce checking fee I got was attributed to this person. So what do you do? It's very simple. When you enter a, an, any transaction, you enter it as a whole figure. When you want to reverse, enter, enter another transaction that reverses the amount out of the system, you just enter it with a negative figure. So you put a minus sign in front of it. How simple is that? So if I go down the list here, so if I just go right down the bottom here and enter a new transaction, I'm going to do nothing but just enter something in here just so I can, you can see. I'm going to even turn, oh, the tax calculator's turned off. I don't even want that on at the moment. So if I wanted to subtract simple amount, if we look down the bottom here, see it says we're up to 24693 So I'm going to deduct $694 off that total amount down there. I just want to let you see that that actually happened. $694. So I've put a minus sign in front of the figure, and then I've typed in 694 so if I now press enter, when that finishes, oh, I've got to go to the next line, I'll just jump up to another line. See now that was $24,000 and something, now it's $23,000. So I just subtracted $694. So that's how simple it is. Anywhere in the software, if you put a minus figure in front of it, it will subtract it from the total. So obviously, if this was for a bounce check or something, I'm going to have to make some additional comments as to why I've putting an entry in the system as a negative because you're going to have to do that because if you ever get audited they're going to want to know why are you putting a negative in because if you're reversing money out of a system that can be deemed to be that you're cooking the books more or less or you're subtracting amounts that shouldn't be subtracted so you normally put a comment down there to say hey this is why I subtracted it however you run your books is your choice but me, whenever I'm putting a negative in, I'll make sure I put down what it is I'm doing. Because in six months' time or 12 months' time or two years' time, you forget why you do these things. I forget why, why I put these entries in. So if I ever get audited and they go back two or three years, there's enough comments there for me to go, oh, that was associated with this, and they can follow it. I mean, I don't even have to follow it. The auditor can follow exactly where everything's coming from because I've put enough comments in there for him to go, oh, that belongs to that, belongs to that. That's why they put a negative in. Same goes for income. So that was in expenses there, folks. So obviously that wasn't really good. It wasn't a good example because that was in the expense screen. I didn't realize that. Sorry about that. So if I go to the income screen, I don't know how I didn't realize that, and I subtract the same amount. <laughs> I'm just amazed I did that. So that figure down here is up to 13000 or 113000 So I'm going to subtract $1,000 off that. So if I minus 1000 That is now 112000 So I subtracted $1,000 by putting a minus sign in front of it. So that proves you can do that anywhere in the system. Now you can also do that with these calculators. See how I was back on the expense screen. I, I turned the calculator off before. So if I go back to the expense screen and I turn the calculator back on, back on, and I'll just prove that that actually happens with, with the calculator. So if I just select anything here, and I'm going to put a negative 1000 in here. Now, if I press OK, you will see it will calculate everything. It's working it out at a 10% sales tax, okay, to make it simple and easy. If I click OK now, it calculated that. It calculated everything out. The sales tax, what the total amount was, 
has come up with a minus sign of 100 and it's deducted that off every figure. That's how you subtract or reverse an entry in the system. You don't need me to tell you this, but keep plenty of comments because at the end of the day, it's got nothing to do with us, how you keep your books. But I do know from experience, if you get audited, make sure you've got enough comment there so the auditor can follow it so as that they don't think that you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing.